Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter a new project every week together. And guess what? This is our final project of our summer quarterly lettering box. If you're wondering what that is I'm talking about, we have a quarterly subscription box where every week we do a new project and we give you all the supplies for this quarter. But if you're watching this and you don't have that, it's okay. I still want you to join along because we're going to have a fun lesson to teach you today. The project that we're doing is this guy. So the quote I chose is, each day is a new canvas, go and make your mark. I thought this was a perfect quote to go along with this sunset setting because each day is a new canvas. So the first step is we're going to watercolor the background, the sunset. Second step is this is a practice worksheet. So if you don't have this, you can go to our website at letsmakeart.com, download that for free, and you can practice along with us. So this is the second step. The third one is we're going to mix your colors. So if you're looking at my palette, I have a couple different colors, which I'll go over. But you'll also notice that there's some white lettering here, and there's some reddish and kind of a rosy pink. So I'm going to show you how you can mix with your bleed proof white to make different tints of colors. And then finally, we're going to letter. Step three is you're going to mix it on your palette. Step four is you're going to actually letter on it. So those are the four steps for this project. The colors that we're using, there are four different ones. First one is pink. Second one is ooh, red. Third is deep yellow. Fourth, you won't be able to see it, but I'm going to do it. Ghost white. Ghost white. <laughs> For Keenan to do. Ghost white. Um, so it's bleed proof white. We can have that text be there, not ghost white. It might yeah. confuse people if you Google that. That's true. <laughs> bleed proof white. How to make ghost white. <laughs> Those are the four colors. So first step is to watercolor your sunset. To do that, what I'd like you guys to have is a plate. Any plate. It could also be a bowl. It could be we have a roll of tape that we've used also. Roll of labels, tape. Any, whatever you need. Just a circular shape. It also could be oval if maybe you have a dish or something. But you're going to use this as your guideline. So I'm just going to use a pencil, trace around this. I'm doing this directly. This is not computer paper. Typically, if you've been with us before, I usually like to do my layout on computer paper. This one, we're just going for it. So this is on watercolor paper. Then when you're doing this, this is you free forming it. So you can have your, you'll have, if you have a kit, you'll have a little one next to you. But what we're going to do is I want you to draw some hills. So allow yourself to see what happens. So you draw a curve. You can choose to have your sun in the middle or on the side. I'm going to have it right here. So I'm just lightly sketching. I understand if drawing isn't your thing. However, I want you to go for it and allow yourself to see what happens. If you don't like it, you can always erase it. Yeah, I added a little one down there. Okay. Can they see that, Keenan? It's okay that it's I drew it lightly. Light. Okay. It's light, but know that so I drew my guidelines lighter. I drew this a little bit darker, but I'm going to draw my I drew them a little bit lighter. I'll just draw them darker for you guys so you can see doesn't help if you can't see anything. But if you're at home, I would probably err on the side of drawing them lighter since watercolors are transparent. Is that better? Much better. Okay. Ooh, that was a big plate. <laughs> um, okay. You could probably almost use your palette. Oh. Yeah, you totally can. If you yeah. don't have your, yeah. Do you just have your box? That's a great, good eye. Okay, for brushes, I'm going to be using to paint my full wash. My, the bigger of my two that we have are the medium aqua wash brush. If you have, Sarah likes to paint with a round six, that might work. Um, they're actually pretty similar in size. But either way, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna, we're gonna paint our wash. So what I suggest to do is start from the back and then move down. One, B, 
because of the perspective of things and we're gonna layer on top of it. And two, because when your hand's moving down, it wouldn't really make sense to draw here and then paint up here. So I'm gonna start with a lighter yellow. To make a lighter version of a color, you're just gonna add more water to it. So let me add a little bit of water. And so I'm just gonna paint. You can move fairly quickly and when you're doing this, this hold might be different, especially if you're not used to painting. This hold is different than when we're lettering, because you'll notice that I'm holding it more at this angle rather than when I letter, I'm kind of more tighter grip. So I'm lettering at this angle, and the reason why is because I want to get the belly of the brush more. So maybe I mix in a little bit more water. So overlap over your lines, allow it to, watercolors to do it, its thing. If you wanna add a little bit more, so maybe I wanna add a little bit of yellow just to the outside so that encompasses it. Okay. Then, the sun, let's see. I think I might, because I, I know I added a little bit too much water, so if I were to paint the sun right off the bat, pick some of this up, I just have a little bit too much water. If I were to paint it off right of, off the bat, it would blend into, see how, can you guys see how this blended right here? It would do that same thing if I were to do it, and so it just wouldn't have as much of a prominent look. I'm okay with that on my hills, but on my sun, I want it to have a crisp line, so I'm gonna wait to do my sun, actually. So I'm gonna do the next ones. You have the opportunity, there's three colors that we started with, however, you have the opportunity to mix and make your own colors. So maybe you pick up some colors. So this makes a little bit of orange. So I mixed, this was my pink and my deep yellow. Let's see what that looks like. So that's kind of, orangey color. I'm going to go off script and it's going to look a little bit different. So each layer of your hills I just suggest to make a different color. Maybe I want a little bit. Mm. So I, if I were to, my thought was if I were to pick up red it might look a little bit different so I'm going to blend that in which it already looks a little bit different. It's okay. What you do, just get water, blend it all the way back in. Don't have to be so worried about the lines. It'll all work out in the end. Maybe a little bit more at the edge. So I'm thinking is that I like to have, I didn't really do it here, but I'm gonna on this one have my edges, just have a more, a darker color, and then allow it to blend out from there. That's a satisfying color. Which one? This pretty coral? Yes. Yeah, that is. You get so relaxing. Uh, like watching the sunrise or the sunset. Yeah. Love Seems it. like it would make you lose track of time. For sure. Okay. That is really satisfying. These are good, as a good color combo. Okay, let's make this one a little bit more orange. So to make things more orange is, I just need to have, this actually already looks Oh, this is the deep yellow. I'm gonna add, you can either pick it up or you can just get new watercolors. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna add just a drop of red. Let's see what shade of orange. So orange is, yeah. Orange is red and yellow mixed together. And usually when we paint, we have magenta, which acts as our red, but for this one, I want to include red just so you can see slightly what different color it'll make. Let's do a little bit more red. So even though this is a new mountain or new hill, I'm just gonna allow it to blend through. And you can see my line through, so that kind of acts as it. If you didn't want it to blend as much of the, as much as this, let them dry completely in between layers. 
and that will prevent that from happening. But I'm just gonna keep going for us. Okay, now for this one, what I did was I just wanted to show, you can also choose to, if you're looking at this solid of a layer, you can have a solid color, but to allow it to feel, so if we're looking at this, you can kind of see some depth from it. So this is because it's darker up here and then it got lighter is here. And this is just a good watercolor technique to learn. So I think I used red for this one as well. So I'm gonna use, maybe let's see what happens if I mix red and a little bit of pink. What happens? Ooh, I want a little bit more red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the top. Sweep on through. And then from there, maybe I want a little bit darker. You can always add a little bit more. Then what I want to do is I'm just, whoops, getting water everywhere. I'm just going to use water and pull it through. So if you see this line right here, that's because it dried a little bit quickly. So what you can do is just, I call massaging back into it. Just move, kind of wake up that color that might have gotten a little sleepy. Just need to wake it back up. It too found itself relaxing. <laughs> Good one. Love it. Um, so that got really light. Oh, that is very peaceful though. Um, so what I can do is if you want to make just a tad bit darker, that's very red, see more softer pink, color back over it. I wouldn't go too crazy. So the thing with watercolors is the way the, the paper is, is if you move into it, you're just gonna rub into it and you're gonna eventually break the paper. So don't go too crazy, but. Okay, like that. Now let's pick, let's just do straight red. I'm mixing up, this is pink. Well, I'm gonna go for pink. It's a different shade. There we go, I forgot I wanna add a little bit more to the edges here. Let a little bit, it's all good. Make that line a little bit more crisp if you want. Okay, so this looks very different than my first one, but I love it. I, looking at this, so after I did that really quickly, I took a step back and I see this harsh line. And what you could do is if that bothers you, just like I was saying, Wake it back up. I just had water on my brush. It wasn't super soggy, it was just damp. Um, but I just need a little bit of water to wake it back up. So I move that back around. And I'm also not scraping into the paper, I'm just gliding over it. Another way you can get rid of a hard line. Yeah. Is if you add a little bit more color. Yes, that is another way. Thank you. Did Sarah teach you that? Yes. Did that come out of your brain? Yeah, so that's another way. If you, if, for me, I didn't want to have, have a different, or a, a brighter color, but you can, if you do do that, I'm gonna show you guys just so you know. I think it was this lighter color. So if you do do that, so I, there's a line right there, kind of. I really like that, but I just wanna show you for, purposes of you guys learning. You add it back over it. The only thing is that that works. As you go through it, you might want to 
just at, use water to act as the rest of your paint because this is so light. But you want to go all the way to the edge because if you stop at any point, you will also create another bloom and a hard stop. So you, you won't see it probably in the moment, but once it dries, you might see it. Okay. Fun. That defeated my purpose of waiting for that part to dry. <laughs> it's okay. I just realized that. Um, it's all good. We're going with the flow. While it's drying, then I'm just going to move on to, we're going to pause and move on, and then I'll come back to that once that's dry. Um, we're going to do some lettering, which is why you guys are here. Um, this is the practice worksheet that I made to go along with this <coughs> project. When you're doing lettering, Typically, what we've been teaching in the style we've been doing is mo modern lettering, so it's mimicking calligraphy, so there's thin upstrokes and thick downstrokes. Bubble in my throat. However, you also don't have to do that all the time, and especially when you're drawing so small like this, you don't have to focus so much on that because then even your thick lines, it'll just be a little bit too thick. So don't worry about that. So when you're going through this lesson, I want you guys to just think about the way you're drawing your letters rather than focusing so much on the thin and the thick size of your brush. So I started off with the first one section is just showing how draw upstrokes and see how thin you can get it. So naturally I can imagine you're gonna just draw it like that. Try and force yourself to just use the tip and see how lightly you can graze the paper. So do that a couple times. Then you'll notice that there are two different styles of lettering for each word. So I drew the whole quote for you guys so you can practice. When you are looking at this, the first one, I each letter, I made it so that it hits the bottom, which is the baseline of your word. Whereas this one, ever so slightly, they, um, some of your letters, the ends of them go below the baseline. So on here it's the A and the H, on here it's the D and the A. So this is what's called bounce lettering, so it's bouncing along the baseline. This is a little bit um, more advanced, so if this is your first time here, just ignore what I'm saying and I want you to still complete this project. The whole goal and the reason why I chose to do this in this one is we're gonna allow our lettering to kind of mold with the um, shape of our hills. So when you're practicing and doing this, don't worry so much about even the bottom of the line. So if some of your letters go above the baseline, keep going. The reason why is I want you to focus, like I said, is less on the little piece right there. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. That eraser got in my way. I'll think of a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> my eraser shavings. Um, I will come back to whatever I was thinking and I'll say it eventually. I'm just going to keep going. So when you're doing this, um, the same thing as I had you guys warm up in the beginning is you'll notice I am lightly grazing the paper. I'm not pressing very hard. If you want to experiment with this bounce lettering, I think, okay, I remember what I was gonna say. Because we are drawing on a curve on a hill, I don't want you to feel like you have to follow that curve exactly. Because I think when sometimes, and I was a perfectionist in school, when we're giving a guideline, we follow it to the T. I want to allow you to break out of that mold and allow yourself to see what happens. And so like on this one, I accidentally drew it a little bit higher. It's okay. So don't be like this is restricting. However, if you want to, instead of drawing all of them at the baseline like that one, for this one I'm gonna try and just extend it a little bit below. Maybe even this one's a little bit higher. That might look a little wonky, but that's okay. We're gonna keep going. You can also play with the height of your letter. So maybe this N comes above that line. So this is just your time. I want you to go through the entire worksheet and practice. So feel free to pause and do that. Um, you have the time, all the time to do that on your own. 
moving back because I want to do this because I notice this is dry. I'm going to paint this really quickly. I'm just going to do this in the sun, the deep yellow. You also, I should say that if you want and you're used to lettering with the aquash brush, not the round zero, you 100% can do that through the work worksheet. What if you put gold glitter gouache in the sun? Do it. Please. Someone do it, please. Um, that would look really cool. I don't know if I call it glitter gouache though. This is an old tissue, but I wanted to show is that even this is wet. I'm going to pick it up a little bit so it has a little highlight. Just felt like doing that. I don't know why. But you can do that if you'd like. Okay. Let that dry. We're going to mix our colors. So when you're looking at this, wow, it is really cool. I just want to point this out. I was so much looser. I think when I painted this, I was probably by myself. I was just trying to make it perfect, trying to make everything even. And when I was with you guys, I did this pretty fast and it, it created a completely different look. And it's a lot bigger. But I just wanted to say that is it's okay if yours doesn't look exactly like this one or exactly like this one. Uh, the big difference is I allowed for more white space to happen. Beauty of watercolors. Okay. That's what we love, you know, just experimenting and yeah. trying new things. Speeds included. Speed. <laughs> How fast we can go. Um, okay. This is step four. Mixing your colors with bleed proof white. Bleed proof white. Did I show this? I don't think I did. This is what will come in your box. If you have our box with us, it's just a little jar. If you see it in our store or on our website, you can get this. Um, this is what it comes in. So it's a bigger glass jar. Bleed Proof White is an opaque version of watercolor because there aren't, let me rephrase that. There are white watercolors, especially in pans. If you have a pan set, there are white watercolors. I personally don't use them because it kind of muddies the color. Um, Sarah teaches this and I do it as well. If you want to make a lighter or a white color, you just add more water. However, when we're lettering on top of something that's a darker color, you can't just use water. It would just dilute itself. So we want to have an opaque version. So there's a binding in this white that allows, you, allows it to stay. So what we're gonna do, so I set this up where I have three different wells of my bleed proof white. Again, I just drip, got a little bit out. I like to use the bottom of my brush, get it out. You can see I have gold from another project. Um, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna leave this one white and then I'm gonna tint these two. So what I'm gonna do is this is red. I'm going to just mix in a little bit. Actually, this is too much bleed proof white. I don't even need all this. Ooh. We're gonna make another color. So you really don't need a lot, especially because we're only lettering a few words. I'm gonna mix three different colors for us. Okay. You can test this out. Maybe it's on, I'm gonna test it out on here. So, There's a lot of water on that, but that's white. I don't know if you guys can tell, but that's like a very tinted, lightly tinted um, red. So I'm gonna make it a little bit, add a little bit more. That's a fun idea. Mixing colors or mixing it with well, like the... mixing it with the white. Yeah. I don't know why I wouldn't have thought of that, but I wouldn't have thought of that. I actually discovered this as an accident. And I was like, this is amazing. I don't even know if this is the right thing, what you're supposed to do. I'm teaching you guys this because this was trial and error. I think when I was designing projects, I was like, wait, you can mix? Okay. So that's, ooh, that's a really soft pink. And what's cool is that I realized this 
is its own color. So what's happening is that it's as if you had a creamsicle and it melted, a strawberry sicle. What I mean by that is because <laughs> I'm Stick still with hungry. Me. Stick so. with me. This analogy. The outside of the popsicle is a brighter color, but if it were to mix together, you have the color and you have the white cream. That's what that is. Nice. <laughs> so that's why this looks different than this because this is watercolor and this is more of a creamy version of it. So I'm going to leave that. That was with red. So this is this is with pink. So pink has a little bit more of a magenta-y color to it. You know what, because this, this, see this is so much white. I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna move the white over here. So that tints it, or you can just add drops of water, or drops of watercolor. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, that might be too watery, but we're gonna yeah, I retract my statement then. It needs a little bit more. So what's happened is it's, well, that works. I'll just show you guys what would happen. Um, but it's a little bit too transparent. I think this is gonna be a fun one. Yeah, that's a pretty color. Okay, we're just gonna experiment and go with the flow, see what happens. Okay, and what's interesting about this is because this one I did a little bit lighter, on here, I had white here and here. It definitely does not make sense here. Let's see. White actually would make more sense right here. So when you have your quote, whether you do this quote or you do another one, see how, depending on how your hills look, where the quote makes sense. So you can either sketch it with a pencil first or you can eyeball it. I'm gonna try and do something similar. So each day is a Ooh, I'm gonna do, mm, let's see, new canvas. Cause I wanna show what white looks like on here. Go and make your mark. So I'm just gonna break this up so then you can see, we'll see what happens. Okay. Last step, step four, letter your quote. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna use, so this is the red tinted bleed proof white. It might be too light. We're gonna see. Yep. Can you guys see that? <laughs> Move your whole head. Um, that is too light. So it's okay from far away. It works, but I wanna make it just a little bit darker. So maybe let me go back and try this red. Okay, so I'm going back and I'm trying my red because it's a little bit. There we go. This brush is getting caught. Oh, there we go. Each, ooh! Well, that ended up mixing together, so it has a kind of mixture. Nice. You know what happened? Story of painting on camera which is life in general. Um, each day is a is not going to fit. It's okay. We're just gonna roll with it. It's all good. And see what happens where I end up. So what I should have done is either moved it over more or made it a little bit smaller, but it's okay. We're improvising each day is a is a new canvas we're gonna do that i want to i don't want to go over my sun so again when i'm doing this is i'm lightly grazing and just using the tip of this brush not pressing very hard each day is a okay so when i have this let's see a new I'm gonna see what happens if I go back to my lighter tinted watercolor. <coughs> Bubble, my throat, sorry. Um, each shade is a new. Yeah. 
Ooh, that's kind of cool. So it's not white, it's pink. Ooh, okay, another tip. If you, can they see my palette? Yes. Okay. What I'm not doing is going like this and then painting because you guys can see there's that drop right there. What I am doing instead, dipping just the tip and then going. It will probably amaze you how little you actually need to dip the brush into the can canvas, into the palette. Trying to multitask. It's hard. <laughs> um, another interesting thing about this is as this is drying, my A kind of disappeared. Can they see that on camera? They can. The close-up, but it is hard to see. If that bothers you, what you will want to do, the reason why is because this is a little bit, it's a similar color, so maybe I need to move one over where it's a little bit more white. Also, because it was so watered down, the paint is just seeping into the paper rather than sitting on top of it. So that's the unique thing about the Bleed Proof White is it's sitting on top of it rather than if I were just paint watercolors, it would seep into it. That's a little bit better. We'll see what happens when it dries. Each day is a new can, I'm gonna do canvas. So for the canvas, I'm just gonna use straight white so you guys can see slightly the difference. Because, I just thought about this, I went to mix my white, I realized it is very, it's, this was straight out of the, um, the jar, so it had no water to it. So it was a little bit too um, thick. So what I need to do is, well, I have a clean glass. I'm just gonna transfer over just a little bit of water to make it a more liquid consistency. If you add too much and it's too liquidy, let's try and see if it is, then I'll just add more water, a new canvas. Yeah, so it's a little bit too, I just noticed that too um, watery. I'm just gonna move over some other water. It's okay, it's trial and error. You just don't want it so thick that you can't paint with it. So again, just use the tip. Um, each is a new canvas, go and make. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna go back. I think we're going to speed through the rest um, since it's gonna be the same. Um, but I'm gonna go back to my tinted red um, bleed proof white. The last thing I wanna say before we speed up is when you're looking at this, if you notice, and this is what I was saying, why this guideline is great to have to practice in the beginning. This is technically my baseline. However, this A is very high, that C is kind of high, that sits right on it, this goes below it. Doesn't matter. So, when you're doing this on your own, see what happens. Do your thing. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, bye. <laughs>
um, each week we're here, we're going to have a new box, and so this is end of summer, we're going to have a fall box, so we're going to be doing something different together. Um, come join along. See you guys later. Bye.